Welcome to the chapter of famous games and how strong players of their time made mistakes in the openings and how their opponents made perfect use out of those. So exhibit A is game from 1824 between McDonnell Alexander and Della Bourdonne Louis Charles Mahé. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly. Almost 200 year old game. There's no picture of McDonald in chess base mega base. I hope you can forgive me and them for that. And you can enjoy an old, I'm guessing that's a painting uh, of uh, La, De La Bourdonne. To recap what you've learned, or maybe you already knew from previous sections, center development castle as fast as possible. That's a critical moment you must always bear in mind. But let's go down to the specifics. E4 was played in this game, C5. Knight F3 developed the knight, knight C6 developed that knight. That's a Sicilian defense for black, one of the variations. So black is actually delaying development uh, of the king side and development of the king, right? But there's an upside to that. If white wants to get more center, which is exactly what white is doing here, after capture, capture, now in the central files, White has only one pawn and black has two. So potentially, potentially, in really long term, black may make use of that. And you'll see how black accomplishes that in this game. E5. So by this day, it is well known that the best move for white here is knight is hanging. So you have to move it. Um, hanging piece breaks all the rules. So you shouldn't develop or anything. You should deal with that. That's a big deal. Knight b5 is the correct move, threatening to jump to d6 in the nearest future, and white gets some slight edge. However, Macdonald took the knight, exchanged the knight, and developed the bishop to an active place. As we discussed previously, this bishop is well placed here, it's attacking the center and attacking the pawn on f7. Everything looks very promising. Why did it as fast as possible, right? Took the knight. The only small problem that black is able to accomplish here is that now it is much easier for black to conquer the center because of this pawn on c6 being alive. It is not obvious at all, I would say. White is so far following the rules clearly. However, the devil is in details. So black develops the knight to f6, attacks the center. The pawn is hanging, what do you do? Well, a good move for white here was to just develop the knight and protect the pawn, right? However, Macdonald decided to develop a bishop to an active place. Pins the knight, pins the knight, so the capture is not possible, and uh, moves the bishop to an active place. Let's see what happened next. Black developed the bishop to e7, unpinning the knight. And now queen e2. That is a small violation of the rule. Um, the sequence of the rule of you should do it as fast as possible is that you shouldn't develop queen early in the stage because it may be vulnerable to attack and it's important to do, to do the minor pieces and castle first. So for example, knight c3 was again a slightly better option for white. He went queen e2 to protect the pawn and he was under the impression that he is stopping this d5, which would get the center for black entirely. However, he was wrong in his calculations. So Labordone goes d5, and now he just decides I'm not going to take the center. Let's take a quick look what would happen. Black proved his calculation that queen e2 doesn't stop the assault in the center. So if white takes the pawn, black takes the pawn, the bishop is hanging, right? You have to do something, you cannot take the pawn. So bishop comes with a check, that seems promising. Black covers with the bishop. Again, you cannot take the pawn because your bishop would be lost. So white captures on d7, looks very promising. Now queen takes e5, nope. Knight takes back to d7, now this bishop is hanging. Bishop takes e7, queen e7, and white failed to fight for the center. Black dominates the center, white has zero pawns in the center and almost theoretically even impossible to put a pawn there. Something went wrong already. So in eight moves black got advantage purely because black got control over the center. Knight takes c6 helped bring the pawn to this square. 
And now queen e2, it seems it stopped d5 and yet it didn't. So white, black seizes an advantage right now. So white takes on f6, black recaptures, and white moves the bishop. Castle, castle happens. So what do we have here? Both sides castled, good. Uh, both sides develop bishops, good. There's a small difference. Black dominates in the center, black has two pawns in the center, white has only one. And also black uh, has a famous uh, advantage of two bishops in an open position, but that's more of a middle game kind of uh, knowledge, not the opening. But you'll see how black manages to use those powerful bishops in the long run. And now black goes a5. Technically speaking, this is not developing move, but black created immediate threat of a4, winning the, the bishop. So white has to react, and white reacted in this fashion, takes, takes, and rook d1. Now black has two pawns in the center, white has zero pawns. The beauty of having the central pawns unconquered is that you can push them. You can push, you can push, you can push, you can leave less and less space to your opponent, and that's exactly what Labourdonne is doing. D4. White goes C4. That's a weird looking move to put the pawn to C4. So I'm not going to really uh, elaborate on that one. The problem is there's a joke or saying, well, but more or less it's true. There are no good moves in bad position. So it's really difficult to suggest a decent move in a bad position. Black has the center, black has two bishops. That's why black is better. If white had at least some of the pawn on d3 or e4, somewhere close to the center, it would be a different story. That's not the case. So let's just continue. There are multiple options on each move. I'm going to show you how De La Bourdonne managed to crush white with those central pawns. It illustrates the essence of why do you need a pawn in the center and what do you need to do if your opponent doesn't put a pawn in the center. You just start rolling those pawns and they may crush your opponent. Let's see. c4, queen b6, develop the queen. Bishop to c2, well, small trick. If queen takes b2, that's a tactical trick. This is not the topic of, uh, of this uh, video. If you want to learn more, I created another Udemy course, Understanding Chess Tactics. You may discover some interesting lines, uh, ideas there, how to see these kind of tactics. Bishop takes h7, gives a check, and queen takes the queen. So black just developed the bishop. Black develops a bishop to an active square, really the most active square you can think of. It is aimed towards the center and it is putting pressure on the pawn. The black could have put the bishop on d7, that's not good, it's not attacking. e6 would be a little bit better. f5 is taken, g4 is taken. Bishop b7, great move. Knight develops to d2 and now rook a to e8. This move may seem illogical to you. Why would you move the rook? Why would you block this rook? But De La Bourdonne is looking one step further. He needs to advance his pawns. He cannot do it e4 without the help of his f pawn. So he needs to push f5. And that's why the rook on f8 would be 100% useful. Knight goes to e4. Bishop retreats, which was the De La Bourdonne's plan to begin with. c5 attacks the queen. Queen c6, this is called the battery, bishop and queen, threatening to checkmate on g2. So f5, knight moves and queen takes g2 would be a huge problem. So white, white plays, apologies, white plays f3 in this position to block that diagonal. Black goes bishop to e7, preparing to go f5 because knight coming to d6 was not a pleasant thing to deal with. So bishop e7, rook a c1, white finally completes the development. However, white has a bad position because black has two bishops and the center. And there you go, f5 is being played. Check on c4, king moves away. It required enormous amount of calculation and intuition because it seems easy, you attack the knight. However, bishop a4, that's a skewer. Check and skewer, queen and rook are on the same diagonal, bishop is taking Oh my goodness, what is that? Apologies. So the queen is hanging. Queen goes to h6. You may wonder why h6. Well, black wants to have ability to give a check on e3. That would be very important in the nearest future. Bishop takes the rook. Pawn takes the knight. Extremely difficult position to, to comprehend. Extremely difficult. 
Um, this is not the topic to understand the difficulty of this position, so I'm just gonna quickly go to the end of the game and maybe one or two critical moments we'll discuss, but check it out what happens if black or white has enormous amount of pawns in the center. Black goes c6, attacking the bishop. E takes f, black ignores that bishop. That's amazing, so white can take that bishop, white would be full rook up, however, after queen e3 check, clearly prepared by Le Bourdonne beforehand. King goes to h1, f takes g2, king takes g2, what else? Rook f2 check, where do you go with the king? If you go to h1, you're being checkmated in two moves. If you go to g1, you're under huge discovered check, and rook e2 is the fastest way to win king h1, queen f3, you don't even win material black checkmates. That's why that bishop is immune to capture, so white has to play the, I think that was the only move, rook c2, which looks weird. So, modern engines find an improvement in the game. In the game, the Labordone played the obvious check on e3. However, engines say, black should have just played bishop to a6, give up this bishop, and just push the central pole. When I saw it, I was like, what is going on here? And then you say, black's pawns are much faster, white's king is in trouble, I don't care that it's uh, that uh, white is rook up, I don't care, it is white to move, those pawns are gonna crush white. I didn't analyze any further, modern engines are perfect in calculating these kind of sharp positions. But let's get back to the game. Instead of bishop a6, queen is 3 check. The last chance for McDonald was to cover with the rook, but this is very hard to do psychologically. Why would you pin yourself? Why would you do it? No, you'll better move the king to safety. However, the safety was not there. So black simply moves the bishop away from the attack. Bishop d7 trying to clear the way of the passed pawn on c6. f2, passed pawn goes forward. Rook to f1, d3, another pawn is coming. Rook c3. Bishop capture, capture, that's fine. Another pawn is advancing. White is exchange up, but those pawns are just crushing. Queen c8, white really wants to promote the pawn. Bishop simply goes to d8, blocking the best pawn. Queen comes back to c4. Queen e1, support of the rook and queen. The queen goes to back rank. Rook c1, d2. I don't care about the queen. If you take my queen, I'm gonna promote. And that's it. Queen goes to c5. Rook g8, not blundering, mate in one. Rook to d1, e3, this is magnificent. Just those pawns just went in side white's position and nobody can stop them. Queen went back to c3, queen takes rook takes and e2. This is the perfect. Three pawns reach the second rank and one of them is about to promote in any second now and McDonald resigned. To recap, what could happen if you do not fight for the center. Those central pawns may crush you. Put at least one pawn in the center. It seemed, that's why I, in previous video, I noted that it's a misleading feeling that, uh, wow, it's so easy. No, it's not. McDonald followed the rules, but the devil was in details and he lost, he lost the fight of the center and eventually those pawns got to him. So that's lesson number one. Keep your pawn in the center, at least one pawn. If you're white and you want advantage, two pawns is better. But one 100% must be in the center, otherwise it's difficult to play. Otherwise those pawns would push you back, push you back, and you'll be in huge trouble. Okay, thanks for watching. 